All right, there we go. All right, welcome to Live Coding Happy Hour for March 1st, 2019. I'm Dave Selesher, joined with Andrew Barnes and Chuck Tomasi, and we are here to do our favorite way of getting into the weekend, which is to code a little on ServiceNow. So welcome, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It, so today, it's definitely my favorite way to start the weekend. So today we're going to do, uh, Chuck is going to drive and we're going to do uh, something. I'm not sure that we have ever actually, we've talked about it. I'm not sure we've ever done this live where he's going to take an existing data model uh, and he's going to refactor it uh, as because needs change. You realize things the way you set it up originally isn't exactly how you want it on production. So you're going to kind of redo a reference to an M2M M2 M and mm -hmm. uh, make sure that everything works when it's done. So. Mm -hmm. We have done refactoring before. My updates at Tracker, we, we've done uh, the refactoring for that. Um, okay. We may have erased the, uh, the memories of that. <laughs> I'm also going to try and preserve the, the data connections as they are now. So that's, that's the kicker too. Because you're, you're trying you know, to gingerly, you're trying to rebuild the ship while it's still sailing. Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Even trickier. <laughs> All right. So let's go around the horn and uh, give the full introduction. Let's start with Chuck. Hey, I'm Chuck Tomasi, Senior TPMM with ServiceNow. Been around the platform for about 10 years, customer at first, and then came over in 2010. Been doing custom applications and integrations in the platform in general since that time, either in professional services, solution consulting, marketing, lots of different places that I've been, and probably more than I'm going to, but I haven't seen that crystal ball yet. So, code on. Excellent. Thank you, Our Chuck. And I'm Andrew Barnes developer advocate at ServiceNow. I've been with uh, the company for about six months now. I've been on the platform for over four years. Uh, go Eureka. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that my release had a name. It was like spring 2000. Spring 2009. <laughs> yes, that probably was your release. Um, I have been doing enterprise applications. Um, I love to uh, teach and learn uh, to uh, different audiences and uh, managing uh, developers and release and updates uh, in ServiceNow is one of my specialties. And I am excited to be here today and with you guys. All right. And I'm Dave Slusher, developer advocate at ServiceNow, <coughs> developer.servicenow.com. Uh, and by the way, uh, I've been trying to kind of let this be go organically, but I'm gonna goose it a little. Uh, if you know that, notice our blog up there uh, that we built uh, kind of the hard way for uh, a variety of reasons. Uh, the One of the things about it is it's built statically. So if you go uh, up there, things like the read count, that's Ajax. We have added comments recently. I so, saw that. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. And all of that is, uh, all of that is uh, like real-time Ajaxy stuff. I spent, it was one of those things where like the API took practically no time. The jQuery took longer, and the CSS to make took the thing the render right forever. <laughs> yes, oh my that's God. always the way it goes. CSS oh is the longest God. part, and I love the fact that it, it, you know, it's Genesis, it's roots. A lot of the experimentation was done here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay, so well, uh, were with, there any organic comments that came in, Dave? Um, per my little Bitbar plugin thus far, not yet, but oh. uh, unless uh, it's, unless, unless one came in in the last bit, hour. Dave. I am poking a little bit. If you uh, see a post, <laughs> you feel like uh, leaving a comment, please do. I gave it a week. Uh, so I don't know if people have noticed that those are uh, up there or not. You got to be logged in. And if you're not logged in, you'll get a, a prompt. But if you're logged in on the developer portal, you can leave a comment now. So feel free to uh, chat away uh, on anything you find useful. All right. Awesome. Now before, Thank you, Dave. before Chuck gets to that, let us go around the horn, same order, and let's discuss our beer. Starting with Chuck. All right. I am drinking the cousin of the one from last time. This is the Deschutes Black Butte Porter. I call this an exceptional beer because the man who built this studio uh, always comes over and says, oh, I, I'm not drinking beer anymore. And then I pull one of these out and he says, oh, I'll have one of those. So he's willing to make an exception for this specific beer. I, I always keep one of these on hand in case Michael R. Menengay shows up at the studio again. Well, that's pretty cool. All right. We're going to explain why in a minute. Uh, but uh, my beer today is dangerously close to stupid um <laughs> is that imperial, the name of it or is that just what you're showing on the back yeah it oh, actually focused really, you had a focus problem so uh give really it a second the name of it 
Back it back it up a slip, pull it back from that webcam a little. It zoomed in just a little bit. Yeah, it was working great before. Oh, I, there it goes. Dangerously close to stupid, and I love the <laughs> nine point three ABV. So it's kind of a self fulfilling prophecy. It is. <laughs> what do you have today, Dave? I've got the uh, black boot tread Belgian amber ale, which uh, is the same source as a number of my things, which is uh, it's whatever is on the shelf at Aldi's. Um, <laughs> in this that. new house, actually, Aldi's is like the closest thing to this house. So uh, the uh, I got one. Uh, I don't think I I don't remember if it was my coating uh, beer last week, but the one I had I didn't like, so I was like I went to get something different. So. Uh, got this. It ha it's a little, uh, I don't know, it's a little malicious sounding uh, from the name, but uh, it's uh, pretty good so far. So we'll come back at the end. So before we get to you, Chuck, you yep. want to do a very quick recap of last week and what, explain why you're picking that beer, uh, Andrew? Absolutely. So we've been working on this YouTube smoke now uh, on the show to do our automation of the scheduling of this for an unreasonable amount of time. Um, and we've had it working in other instances quite a number of times. And we've tried to deploy it to our what is our production instance um, for us. Uh, and we failed miserably. Uh, and today, I oh, found and that's, that, that's why we rebuilt it last time, right? Because yes. we thought there was something wrong with it. We thought there was something wrong with what we had done. And there were artifacts in there and we, we just wanted a very, very clean install. And so after the show on Friday, I finished up uh, getting everything working uh, back to clean state again. And then today I tried to deploy it to our production instance and failed. And then I tried, we tried upgrading to Madrid because uh, it was on London and we thought, oh, well, okay, well, well, we'll move it up to Madrid. Um, uh, because I tested it in another instance. I deployed it to a different instance that was Madrid. It worked there. And I was like, okay, we'll upgrade to Madrid. So we upgraded to Madrid today, redeployed it, still failed. <laughs> and, and it did not have very helpful errors. Uh, and uh, just happened to realize that we didn't have integration hub installed on that instance. And went and installed it. And then it started to work. Including the old one. And, and <laughs> it, was, it was just the saddest moment. I was happy because it then worked. So as a note to you people out there developing your own uh, functionality, if you deploy an integration, you know, a set of an integration spoke to an instance, you're going to want integration hub on that instance. <laughs> You are, and you won't get a very big, uh, shiny. You need this uh, when you try and install it. You'll just, you'll just fail. We're, you might think that we had a thought of that ahead of time that we would need integration hub for our integration, but we did not. We've added it to the task list to check with the product managers to make sure that <laughs> this is addressed in the future. Absolutely. All right. All right. So that's so that's the recap. You so walk now us through your. Yeah, uh, it's all you, Chuck. Today, Chuck. Yeah, yeah you, we might even wind up calling it the Andrew message. <laughs> I'm, I'm not feeling great about uh, how I had to find that out. You never want a policy or an error message named after you. <laughs> really don't. Right. My scenario, I'm going to do the screen share thing here. So whoever's on the other end, you're ready for that. Yep. Let's share that, find the share button, and away we go. Okay. I also want to turn the camera off for the moment. Do that. And what I've built is going to be used at... CreatorCon, we're going to be doing three games of Jeopardy. Service now Jeopardy. So I built a Jeopardy game with the cards. It, it's working as close to the game show as I can with the exception of Final Jeopardy. I don't even think we're going to have time for that because we only have 30 minutes, but I may build that in just before distribution. So that's, that's neither here nor there. Let me give you a quick run through how the game works. I can run from the board or I can run, or excuse me, from, from the list. I can choose the UI action or I can go in here and say, Open up the board. I may have to reduce this down due to screen resolution. Yeah, it's just a little tight. And here's our board. This game is already in motion. Apparently, I should have done a reset game. We've got our categories across the top. Please release me. All about ServiceNow releases the fossil record. ServiceNow history in the box. What comes in the box or out of the box. Security badges, of course, security-related questions. This one's called What's That Feature? Careful with your imagination. And Oh Really, which has nothing to do with anything ServiceNow. It's just a bunch of fun questions. So... If I were to pick, like, what's that feature for 400? 
The question is mid, as in mid server. And according to Jeopardy, you pose this in the form of a question and say, what is management instrumentation and discovery? Okay. And the host has a mobile device that's getting the question and answer fed to them. So you don't even need to know. But if you really want to peek at the answer, you can see it with that. If you want to mark it that nobody got it right. Okay. Let's say Michael answers it correctly. I click the thumbs up. He gets the $400 added to his total or he gets it wrong. He gets the $400 deducted and the others can buzz in and answer their question. The amount is not editable until you hit the daily double. And that's pretty much how the game goes. The problem I have right now is that a setting up the game is a little laborious because you need to first use the wonderful report, the pivot table that I wrote you first, you're Generate questions like gangbusters, crazy. Can't spell Jeopardy, Geo Party. And I said, wait a minute, I need a difficulty level one, two, three, four, and five in each of six categories. So until I've got 30 questions put across the board, I can't even put together a board. So what's that look like? I made a pivot table of difficulty to category to see what can I use. Now, these are the ones that are currently available. The, the challenge I have is each card is only related to one game. I can't reuse that card again until I detach it. So it's being linked with a reference field. The card record looks something like this. Let me uh, get the categories so you don't see all the answers at the same time. <laughs> I want to filter on just show matching because if I give all you all the answers, you're just going to shout them out at the game, right? So ATF, let's take that card for example. Simple record. It's got a number. I don't know why I give it a number. I don't think I use it, but when I was making the table, I checked auto number just for the fun of it because the game is the actual display value, as you can tell, or excuse me, the, the category. Try that again. The answer is the display value. You can see that up here. And then the question. But you can see there's a reference to the game. I need a many to many. This will enable the ability to generate the game quicker and use the card on multiple games. So I could, as Jason McKee said, why don't you put a, a UI action that says, generate me a random game right now. And it will take any category that has at least one in each difficulty. And hopefully you've got six of those compiled. Otherwise it'll say, I just don't have enough. So there's that, that's a future release of, can we make a random game? Right now, I need to make this a many to many so that the card can say, I am in games one and three for example, down here in a related list. That's so the first thing we need to do is generate that data model, of course, right? Let's go to Studio, which I happen to have right here. And, you know, I swear that's at 150. Okay, that's at 150. I reduced it because the board didn't fit at the moment. Let's get rid of these guys. I'm not using them. I was just using them as references before. And to create a many-to-many -many table, very easy. So before you dive into yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Can you show me um, where, so that was the card, yep. but where's the game referencing that card? Oh, sure. So under the game. The card references the game. I have, the, the card is referencing with a reference field. So that means you automatically get it as a free related list in any one of these. Okay. So if it's, it's on a related list. And to build a board right now first i go through and say here are my players they were originally a reference field as well and i rebuilt them as a many to many but there weren't as many players as there are cards i've got 167 questions in this database right now that's a lot of cards and i don't want to hand build them like i did the players i turn this into a many to many and like jeopardy if michael were to win he goes on to be the champion in the next game and the next game and the next game until he loses and then the next person takes over so i built a many to many where this is an instance of Michael, but his profile continues to accumulate the winnings from each instance. That's awesome. where the many to many on the player to game table takes place. Then when I'm building, I go and make categories based on that report. I know which ones I can choose that puts them up across the board in the following order. And then I go and pick random cards out of those categories. And I'm going, well, let's see, I need a level four security question. And I go and find one. If I happen to have two, I just pick one at random, fill in the reference field and boom, it's attached to this board. That could be made a little easier with a many to many. And obviously there's different ways we can visualize that. Awesome. Thanks for that interview. You're welcome. All right. Note now the now to building the MDM. Yeah, now to building the MDM. I also use a name value pair for your field here, which is how I get the host, the information about what is the question we're answering. What is, this is the last thing they saw and using record watcher, I put it on the mobile device. So the mobile device is like Alex Trebek's cardboard oh, nice. cards. That was, that was my little, uh, 
they, engineered it at the gym in my head and went, I need a way for the host to see the questions. Because sometimes all you get is a picture. It's like, oh, you know, this uh, service now office from Solana Beach, California was originally known as this. And it shows up a picture. But, you know, Alex needs to read that question. Where is the question visualized if not on the big screen? So that was my teleprompter for the host. And I may add a little more as time goes on, which will be really easy with the many to many. Okay, back main, to main value pair is nice. I, I yeah, think it's... Like, uh, many. I don't think many of our viewers have uh, used those too much. They uh, come to my IoT weird. lab at Knowledge sixteen fifty five, and you will, <laughs> you will get more of this love. I am always looking for excuses to use cool stuff like that. All right, back to the data model. Create application file. Underneath data model, there is many to many definition. This makes a definition, and it says what tables would you like to connect. And very easy to define. You say, here's the, here's the table one, here's the table two. Imagine this as I'm, I'm soft shoeing until the screen paints up here. <laughs> Users and groups are in this same thing. There's the sys user table, there's the sys user group table. And a group can belong to many, uh, can have many members, and a user can belong to many groups. So there's this many to many table in between called sys, UR, sys user gr member. That's the connector. It's really just a table with two reference fields, but you can't do many to many and get that edit button on the related list and do this beautifully without this definition. So I am simply going to define this as my game table, <coughs> SNC Jeopardy game to my card table, which I just love saying, which is SNC Jeopardy card, 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 card. I went right past it, didn't I? There it is. So those two, over here, it says, what is the field you want to use to connect? And it does a pretty good job of assuming. So the from table car game uh, is going to display the related list with cards. And the card table will display the related list that says games. Just like if you're on the users, it says groups. And if you're on groups, it says members. So you can modify these labels at this point. That's really it. I'm just picking two tables. I also like to inspect this table name because I do not prefer plural table names. And I often, since I already have two of them in my data model called game player and game category, I'm going to call this game card. So just for consistency, I always like to inspect that and make sure that it meets my own personal naming standards. And when you're building it, it's the time to do that. Yes, because you can't delete the definitions. Okay, you, you would have to go to Scripps background and delete them the hard way. There is no delete button on this record henceforth. And what it did is it created in my data model two things. A many-to-many -many definition for game card. You can see I had game category. Nice consistency there in your naming. I like Thank that. you. And a table horrifically named Jeopardy M2M game card, <laughs> <laughs> which is what I called it. But that's not what I want to call this. I'm just going to call this game card. Very fixable nice. now, though. That's that's the label you can fix. Because did you uh, did you pick that check or did that automatically? It automatically it's created the label gotcha. for the table based gotcha. off of the definition yeah, and table. You can't name. Edit that at the definition level. You have to wait till it's generated and then you yep. do it here. That was the one thing I couldn't change. But I always make a habit of going to change this. And many to many's. Now that I've got this, it's oops. Let's shut down the board for a sec. We're not ready to go there yet, just so I don't get tab overload. Now that I've got this, I can, of course, go to configure related lists and put in cards. And now I have two cards, one that is card to game and one that is cards. Here's the mnemonic. If you see an arrow, it's a single reference field making that connection. If you don't see an arrow, it's a many to many. Think of approvers. That's a many to many. So that, that's my mnemonic when I see them on this list. If you see two that are labeled the same, you now know which is which. But of course, I don't have any cards on here, but I could add them very, very quickly. Uh, now, Chuck, the, you'll notice um, yeah. one of the things, if you go back, yep. well, um, you'll notice here is where there's a little bit of an interface problem, right? In the fact that you've got two tabs, they're both named, but you're going to remove the one, right? I am going to remove the one. Okay, okay. Okay. But so right now, the, this, like the, the reference and the M2M kind of yep. introspect themselves into the same name. They do. The easiest way to tell them apart, at least from this implementation, is the many to many has an edit button. The one to many doesn't. 
Right. So you can easily tell that apart. Or the order on configure related lists. Cards to game came first before cards. So yeah, there's there's a couple ways to detect what's the difference. The um, also notice I don't have much of a list layout. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably want to replicate that over to this side too. In your case, luckily, you know, like the, as it is now, um, I'm just trying to think if there's a room for confusion if somebody's doing this work, but you're probably going to have one that's populated, one that's not. And the unpopulated yep. one is the one, which is probably maybe even uh, uh, a case for not putting much data in there. Or definitely don't put the same number of records in there. <laughs> if you only got one in the one, you're going to get confused uh, yep. at some point. All right, now here's the other point. From the card, I'm also tracking elements of the game. Is it answered? Who's it answered by? So I've got a state, and putting that at the card level isn't really the proper place to put that. The The category could it can stay here because that question should always be in the same category. It's not like that needs to be in multiple categories at the same time. Game is going to go. Difficulty will stay. I'm just virtually inspecting these. Is it part of the daily double? That daily double question appears on the game. So a few of these elements I want to move to that many-to-many -many table because they're part of that card's behavior for that game, not consistent throughout. Just because Mark O'Donnell answer, answered it correctly in game one doesn't mean the card itself has been answered for all time eternity. That's not what I want to track. So let's do that next and take some of these attributes and move them to the many-to-many. -many. There's nothing sacred about this many-to-many -many table that makes it, oh my gosh, I can't add anything. I regularly put things on my many-to-many -many tables. That, that is something that is, uh, you, we definitely, um, I've had to teach that several times um, to, to developers is that there is, just because this was generated yep. doesn't mean that it's sacred. Mm -hmm. You yep. can treat this as you treat pretty much any other table. Um, so it's your table. It's your table. Have fun with it. And this is Chuck. You're really hitting on uh, like the um, like the really important part of this process because at this point now you really have to go through and rethink, um, you know, rethink your data model, right? Because yep. you got to have to look and see what is a durable attribute of this, uh, and what is a contextual attribute of this. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Did I say anything else? Uh, game is going to go. Difficulty category stay. A state. State. Yes, we need a state on this. And that is a choice list. This looks like it's going to be fun. Um, so if, you, <laughs> if you're not going to attend knowledge, you should definitely attend knowledge. May 6th through something. Fifth through ninth, the fifth and fifth sixth are pre-con training. Seven, eight, nine are the regular conference. I'm, I'm going to get it right one of these times. One of these weeks. <laughs> I say it better. every morning. <laughs> uh, fifth through ninth, uh, come see us. We're, we're going to definitely be there. Uh, Chuck's got a gazillion sessions. Dave and I will be doing uh, three each. Now, I actually like doing the choice lists from the form designer. Some people will right-click and do sys choice. But doing it this way gives me the cheater way to have two tabs on the screen at once. So I can say, create choices. I'm going to make this a drop down without none. If I remember right, that's what I had on the other screen. The, the choice list on that form designer is actually one of the things I actually do like to do. Note, there is a difference between doing this and doing the configure choices. The main difference is when you configure uh, the values, so let's say it's queued, or what is it, available, queued, available, I think is the first one. I should probably just check. It's available, queued, answered, and unanswered. Okay, and there's a reason I have all four of those in the game. There's available, and note how it makes a lowercase value for that. So the first one is the label, second one is the value. If you were to do this through right click choices. on a label yep. and say configure choices the values come out as the same as the labels uppercase yeah. will be uppercase i don't, think I, I, don't think I ever use configure choices there i, I, I have I go I to the dictionary i either go configure dictionary and go to the choice table you know well, that's hardcore yes <laughs> yeah or i do it from the form designer i i don't think i ever use the configure really? choices 
Oh, I, I do this all the time. In fact, I, uh, quick story, since I suspect we're going to have time anyway, I was doing configure choices. I was making a video with our multimedia team and Marcy Palin, God bless her soul. She was the script writer. She hands the script off to me. And I had typed in something like dark red. Okay. And it would show up as dark red here in the sys choice list. The value said dark percent 20 red. And it drove me insane because I had this, in fact, it might still be in the technical best practices to go and replace that or spaces with underscores in your values because you may run into problems. UI policies in the, the, the condition builder do not work with percent 20 in there. Oh, she said, goodness. I really? can't get that to repeat. I can't get this to do it. What were you doing? And I was saying, I'm entering it in and it shows up on the list. I go to sys choice and it's got a percent 20 in there. She says, I can't get it to do that. And I said, now I know for a fact somewhere in the old code, it's not saying, I mean, we, we literally sat on her instance at her desk with her keyboard. All she did is get up and I sat down and I could make it happen. <laughs> there is there. That's the only variable. I mean, we, we were that close to ripping our hair out. I said, I know there's no code in there that says if Chuck is at the keyboard, let's screw with him. Okay. What we found well, was that, that's a level of trolling. That's pretty awesome though. If it, <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was too. She said, wait, go slowly. What are you doing? And I would type dark green and I was hitting enter. She was clicking the add button. There was a change in functionality between those two ways of submitting this thing into the list. One would add the space. One would put in percent 20. You're kidding. That's, no. that's freaking awesome. I walked that, over. That's, wow. the that's worth a drink right there. Everybody take a drink because <laughs> enter and the button did different things. <laughs> it was fixed like three years ago, but it was enough to drive me insane. It's one of those things that three hours later, we've narrowed out all the variables except the chair. <laughs> 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 and, and that was it. So I, it, it's one of those crazy stories that, that will live on in my head as you got to be kidding me. You know, one of those things. <laughs> That's uh, a great, great fortunately, it doesn't happen anymore. You don't have to worry about that. But some of you may remember what happens. It, it, it was little nuances like that. What? what? How? What? How does that even happen? Oh, man, there ought to be something on the, you know, the insert record part of that that fixes that. Okay. Queued answered. <laughs> Available queued answered. Not answered. <laughs> Available. Queued. Answered and unanswered. And my default should be available. Good. That is the state. Um, answered by is a reference. I don't need to change anything there. Daily double defaults to false. Just to make absolutely doubly, triply certain all these field names are the same, it's answered space by daily space double. Oh, I violated one of my own best practices. The second word should not be uppercase there, but it's going away, so I don't care. <laughs> this one is, in fact, correct. That was old Chuck. <laughs> that was Chuck was in a hurry. <laughs> that was two weekends ago, Chuck. <laughs> Chuck got really old in two weeks. All right, so my game card now has some attributes on it. We've designed the form. Let's take a look at our new record what it looks like it should have this is this is when you want to look at the form layout too let's throw one of those i may need to change my display value i'm not sure i like this a whole lot um, that may be where the number can come in handy so yeah, that you see numbers or being your display value seems yeah that that's not good let's just put itom over there as an example record and now i have one card we will probably want to modify the list layout to dot walk a few things that are a little more handy, like from the card, let's go get the, oh, I don't know, the answer, the... And just because just it's teaching Friday, yes, um, that, that button that you clicked there was the show the related fields button. Yes, this this appears on any of these green ones that are reference fields. Reference fields will show up with a plus and they're green, and you can drill into them with this handy little thing. 
So you can drill in and go get the fields from that. And they will be represented as card.answer, card.question, card.daily. You can only do as admin when you're configuring this list layout. You cannot personalize these. You can't add them via personalization. Just a note. Good point. You are correct. And, and my logic for that is because if you let every user do this, there is a cost to do the drill down in here because it is fetching mm -hmm. another record. If you let everybody in the company do more complex, expensive queries, you could impact performance negatively. Absolutely. So let's go to answered by, and we already know what game it's on because it's on the many to many table. We should probably get the state and you know, that feels about right for now. Good enough for now. Did I put the category on there? I, I did not put the category on, so let's get that. Okay, it's going to be a long list. Ta-da! Okay, so I, Tom, I, Tom, we probably don't need the card if the answer is there. So let's just tweak that. I knew something felt redundant, but I couldn't put my finger on it. List, layout, get rid of card. In fact, you notice that game shows up, but game does not show on the list. It does that a lot with with list layout on reference uh, related lists. And I don't know why, but it knows to ignore that. It says, wait, you're already, no, you don't need that. So if it don't need it, I don't want it. Doesn't impact anything. It's just one of those weird quirks like, okay, where's game? It says it's at the top of the list. Well, it's actually right here. Yep. Game is one. Now, Here's the other challenge you got to remember when you're doing many-to-many -many lists is if you want to see the many-to-many -many record, you click the little I. If you click the first column, you may not get to go where you want to go. It will take you, for example, to the card record, not... Well, that one actually did go to the many-to-many the -many table. Interesting. So... The answer is not a related... Uh, it's over it's a reference here. Field. Oh, that's... Yeah. No, that, that brings me to the category. The category is another reference field. Why does it not take me to the card card? Because uh, answer is not a reference field. Answer is not a reference field. Oh, the other one was that the card field that I took off was. Okay, anyway, I whenever it comes to many to many's, I always do this, the two-click approach. Now, what we need here is first a form layout. That one's not too bad, but I'm going to do form design on this one real quick. It's my game. I get to play it. State moves up. We're getting to the coding part. Trust me. I think that didn't stick, Chuck. <laughs> what? How did I? That almost felt like... May... Yeah, I think you may have... I think that was a timing of I... mouse up. <laughs> Jiggled it, yeah. <laughs> Take your foot off the mouse, sir. <laughs> Gotta got right. slow down the mouse. That looked pretty good. I mean, that's really all I wanted to do in this one. I don't have a display value on this record, and I don't know that I need one yet. So let's do a reload form. Looking better. We have our states. Now, what I need to do is preserve that other data. This is where it's going to get fun. So hold on to your hats. We don't need. So we did have a question in the chat, and this is, I think, a, a, the point where it's uh, starting to come into play, where uh, yeah. Joshua Saxton was asking, what's going to happen to those uh, those columns that you created in the MT M2M table that were also on the card? So we're getting getting about to that point. That's where we're getting. So I've got we're my- We're going to transfer the data, and then we're going to yep. delete them. Exactly. This is where the scripting is going to come in because I need to do a one-time script. And in a production environment, we've got some options. We could do this in scripts background and test and test and test. We could do this as a fixed script, which means it will get into our updates at an application and we can run that as a one-time thing in production. And I recommend that if you are if you are testing that same fixed script in UAT and you want to get it through because the person who's doing the promotion may not be the same person who's doing the actual execution or application of that update set. You know, the, 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 the developer in, in the dev instance goes, okay, we're ready. And somebody else may be doing this in production. So you better give them explicit instructions and the less human interaction you can give them like copy and paste this script. We all know how well that works when you're going from a word document. So, and, and just and, to be clear, if this was in a situation where it was pure dev and uh, 
and there's no incumbent data, mm -hmm. then it's not a this you don't have to worry about it as much. In this case, you have stuff you want to preserve. And particularly like if you're upgrading, let's say this is a thing that has been published and now mm -hmm. you're you're refactoring the data model, you absolutely have to do that. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to drop data on the floor. Yeah. A a again, if this if, if I didn't care about my 167 cards being attached to the three games that I've set up, I mean, that's three, there's 30 cards on each one. That's 90 things that I have to rebuild. Not going to happen. Right. If you had like five test cards in there, you may not bother with the fixed script, right? Exactly. But, but you ha do have stuff you want to preserve, and that that's why this is a thing. Yep. And when you're dealing with a data model change like this, depending on the complexity of the data model and the complexity of what you're changing and your abilities as a scripter and developer, another choice outside of fixed scripts that you promote via update sets is you could do an export import and a transform with the data. So that that is a thing that's available to you um, that is a less intensive coding option uh, that's possible that's an interesting yeah that's an interesting option and i thought of that you could do an import from one instance to another or export it as even yeah. an excel sheet yeah, and you say can export it as an excel and then import yeah. it in and do uh, a transform onto the new target table interesting approach hadn't thought of that and I just answered one of my own questions in my head. Are fixed scripts available in studio? The answer is yes. <laughs> I didn't know they were until now. <laughs> I've not explored every option under every menu. <laughs> so let's go ahead and create a fixed script. And I am going to do a test in, I like, I'm not going to write it there. I'm going to write it here in our old friendly visual studio code. And First, hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> yeah, hello, dark theme. <laughs> <laughs> I need to run through every card, right? Bar card GR equals new glide record. X, S, and C, Geo Party. I like Color. how your fingers aren't listening to your board. I know. It's, it, it, it's a holdover from this morning's webcast. <laughs> Uh, card gr dot query. I want them all. While card gr dot next. And for each card that we find, what are we doing? We need to uh, find out if it's connected to a game. So game ID bar. Game ID equals card gr dot get value. Get value, get value, get value, get value. I don't know how many times I can say that before I beat it into everyone's brain. <laughs> Getters and setters. It, it's important. it will save your life. Just trust us on this one. Just There's trust. Been no pain and suffering throughout the platform if you just try game.card. Weird explicative happens here. Uh, game ID if game ID. Right, so that's a good enough way of saying if it's not null then we are going to connect it to a many-to-many -many card, right? Then we will make a M2M GR equals new glide record. X, SNC, GO party, M2M game card. Naming standards help in these cases, kids. M2M GR dot new record. Tell us. Andrew, what's the difference between new record and initialize? The difference between new record and initialize? <laughs> I thought this just came up like in conversation, it, uh, like uh, in the last it, couple of days. It, it, it comes up uh, probably every week. <laughs> <laughs> so one of these uh, gets you a completely empty record, and one of them gets you a record with the default values populated. I like default values especially when it comes to that state where I set the state default value, I want that. So I have gotten into the habit of doing new record. I've also taken on Dave's suggestion of doing get unique ID for instead of get value sys ID. It's actually a couple of characters shorter. And when it comes to saying it's faster, it is, it is. How do you it know? Is. I mean, I, how, it is, it is a uh, tested and kid tested and mother approved faster. Interesting. Is faster. It's about a 
God, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it is a non non trivial amount of percent faster. <laughs> non trivial amount of percent. All right, <laughs> we're gonna go with that. Which is which to me is more than ten percent faster. We have, we have to link this. First, let's get the game and card set up. I'm going to take advantage of your non-trivial amount of percent. <laughs> but again, even for me, as always, my, for me, I like it mainly because of the visual clarity. When you're looking at the code, it's so obvious what's happening. Whereas get value, sys ID, you have to think about it a little bit and it, it kind of blends in with everything else and get unique it's, value jumps out that it's jumps it's out. only one thing you're doing. Well, it's yes. kind of along the same lines as get display value versus say, you know, get value number. Like right? mm. your sure number is still your display value because it may not be in my land. Yeah. Mm. And conceivably, I mean, we're not going to change sys ID yep. being the unique up value, but it could could be. What else do I need to copy over? The oh, the answered by. I mean, we could just, just open back over to your many and <laughs> yeah, just look at the fields. I would just, I would look at that because my memory is not the greatest memory, but I'm not, I cannot I can application. read the screen. <laughs> I've been living this application for a couple of weeks now, so it's, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> There's answered by, and there is. Uh, Chuck's memory is better than answered. daily double. Daily. Thank you. That's why I wanted to make sure that these were the same field names. And for those of you that weren't paying attention, what gets stored in a true false field? There's a trivia question. We should put that as a card. What is the value that is stored? <laughs> totally make that as a card. I should. It stores zeros and ones. Yep. That's, that would have been my guess, but I didn't, uh, that would have been a guess. I didn't know that authoritatively if you are doing a get value you have to watch out for zeros and ones that's because if you try and compare them to true and false you will have a sad day all right do we believe oops not new record how about insert that would be better wouldn't it <laughs> didn't know you could pass parameters to insert until now uh answered by daily double state game card one two three four five five fields to make that record one two three four five feels right this would be really sad. This would be the, like the least code we've written on Live Coding Happy Hour if this just happens to work. <laughs> you got both of the references. Game ID, card. Okay. Are there any other criteria? Before we look, let's look at an existing card. Mm, get one that's... All right. Oh, oh, okay. So the card definition. This isn't all we're going to have to write. We got to really do some work on Service Portal and a script include. Uh, service Portal, to, maybe. Yeah, to script include, using definitely. It. Absolutely. Yeah, because this is going to be all get that data. Because the, the service portal is saying, hey, go get me the cards for this category. And it's like, or for this board, actually. And this you need game. to point to a whole new table now. Yes. And if I want the image, I'm going to have to dot walk for it. Or, or, yeah, that's, ooh, this is, this is the easy part. I am going to go make a bunch of cards right now. <laughs> Let's put that in scripts background and run it because I have. Ever so, do we want any output on that just to say, hey, I did something for you? No, nah, script's background will tell us. It's not going to tell us when it, it, it'll just say, I'm done. It'll bark it'll show us how many records and we can go look at them. You're right. I forgot. There's all yes. sorts of useful things. With Here's what I would do when you when you run it, uh, record it for rollback as you're doing it, that. That's on by yeah, default do it. down okay. here. So go. down here we have record for rollback is on by default. I encourage you to always have that on. Never turn it off. Somebody right. said, oh, I deleted all my users. So I hopped on their instance and undeleted all their users for them. <laughs> Not to get off on a tangent, but what yes. was the targeting mouse cursor you just did? Because that was awesome. Oh, this? Um, <laughs> that's a Mac service add-on, uh, like in system preferences, called mouse cursor or something really obvious like that. I use it on presentations Cause, because cause what I notice when I do screen shares. I like it. Normally, when you shake the cursor, it gets it bigger. Gets I don't bigger, know if you're even seeing that. You can change yeah. it to that does not target. translate through Wirecast on the desktop presenter. So I adopted this tactic. There are others where you click it and it'll go bing and it'll make a red ping on the screen. All right. So, so looking at that, that does not smell right. Why? 
Because you inserted 90 rows. Yeah, there were 90 cards attached. Oh, I thought you had cards. Yeah, three games. Oh, okay, cards three games. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Yeah. I was thinking you had 30. You wanted 30. Yeah, you, you, he said 90, and I was like, 90. Look at it. It's awesome. Three games. Game one. And hopefully we see. Oh, this one has 31. 31. No, you, you created a test one. Manually. Yeah. Crap. <laughs> Equals I, Tom. <laughs> Say this goodbye. one does not belong here. <laughs> this one does not belong. <laughs> All right. Now the fun begins. We've got our data transported over. We could, at this point, destroy the old fields. Which yeah, but definitely... we're not going to do that until we're we're happy. But then you don't know if you're getting he... the wrong data from the wrong card. Yeah, I would destroy them at this point because ne at this point, well, I would. So you've inspected that all your data is there. I would actually look at all three games just to make sure there's not some flaw. Yeah, let's do that. Let's save this script over there. Um, run before, run once, looks good. Blah, blah, blah. Copy card info to M2M table card game, game card. Are you actually promoting this somewhere else? I might. Okay. <laughs> just a question. I might have another instance that's running a Jeopardy game. All right. <laughs> So it, worst case is we just saved it. Yeah, so, it's there. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, Dave says, go do an inspection real quick. I've got. Yeah, hit down to the next record. Just see if. Oh, yeah. I had a filter in here. 30 cards. 30 cards. 30. 30 cards. 30 cards. Okay. And another quick inspection yeah. would be. Sort by answer A to Z, sort by answer A to Z, and we should be able to visualize quickly, visual. quickly. ACL adding this role, cats, felines, dogs. ACL adding this role, cats, felines, dogs. I'm happy. Feeling, okay. feeling pretty good. Yep. Delete yes. the fields. Yeah. So Let's now, yeah, back. that's that's in this case, I would at this point always uh, delete those because. That's because now, now, now you're now at the point where you want to see crazy the crazy me would export them first. I already did before the show started. Right. <laughs> okay. Because I don't delete anything until I've exported it so that yeah. I can get it back. Yep. Yeah, I, I have multiple copies of these floating around on multiple machines <laughs> at this point. Fair enough. I am not. I See, I made a trivia game. Remember when I was giving out the bow tie buttons? Was it last year or the year before? Year before. At 17, I was giving out the bow tie buttons and I had made a service portal app for trivia and I had about 100 questions in there and I lost them all. Oh, I had, no. fortunately, a lot of these cards are based on that and I had a draft in Evernote. So this was built out of the ashes of that. But I really miss having the XML of those records. Okay, so now our card record... If I click one of these bad boys, the list will automatically be updated and I can actually take that off the list. So this is the definition of a card. It has a category, it has a difficulty, it has a question and answer. That's really all we need. And we have about 10 minutes left to fix everything else. <laughs> so out of curiosity, let's open your service portal widget and just kind of see what we see. Oh, are you insane? It's going to say I got nothing. I know. Yeah, That's categories. what I want to see. Okay. Right. Correct. Okay. Pay no attention to those category names. <laughs> uh, so we have our cards, we have our categories. In fact, when you remove the reference field from card to game, the related list goes away as well. Oddly enough, it will keep the list layout just in case you ever want to put one back. Okay, so now we go to the holy script include that I unimaginatively just called util. And in here, I define my... Tables at the top, which it's time to add a new table. Game, card, M2M, not m and Access and C. This is where Dave and Andrew say, why aren't you just copying and pasting? That's definitely what Andrew says. Because I am brave Dave, this way. Dave, Dave is braver than I am. He'll, he'll type some things out. I type I, them things out. I will copy and paste because, well, All right. you, just to you make have, Andrew you, happy, you have a provable memory that's better than mine. <laughs> there, I made you happy. It, it's I, copy I, and pasted I, in there. Now, 
somewhere in my service portal widget, it says, go get me the card list for this game. And this game is instantiated with the object. This is, this is, this is a time saver in most cases. If you just say here, instead of passing the same parameter around to 90% of my functions, just take it when I make the object and deal with it. The, the downside is when you call functions that don't need it, you still got to instantiate it with the object. Uh, it goes through and says, go get me the categories for this game. We already know how to do that because that's working. We proved it from the card. For each category that you find, go and there's the card table. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Which is so each category, I got to look at the data model again. Hold on, hold on. These categories are going to have, so like what's that feature on this game? has 16 questions, 16 cards. And I got to remember what this function is actually doing to build this for me. Um, wait a minute. I've got six categories. Goes and gets the category. Uh, category, category, object. So it's getting game ID off of the card table, but you you don't want the card table. You want the M to M table and yep. get the card and the game from that game card M to M, but I need to dot walk to get the text because I need to pass this card GR to make the object for each card. Yes. All right. So the category is not going to come from there. It's going to come from, Card gr dot category ID? Yes, no, no. Where is this coming from? Card. No, the category. The category Go. is related to uh, the game, right? The category yeah, the is category. on. The but you've already, no, you've already, you've already. The category is on the card. But all I have at this oh. point is a. Oh, I'm adding the query. Which cards do you want to get? Not the many to many cards. I still want to get the cards. You still want to get the... Because the cards are associated with a category. There's a reference field. This is but... still card table here. Oh. oh, Okay, well, you're definitely going to have to change the query for the game then because you can't mm -hmm. query game from the card table because it's not on there. You're right. It's not on the game. It's... <sighs> you're right. So it feels like you're going to have to go to the M to M to get the cards. It feels you're like I'm going to have to do a query on yep. the M to M to get the cards you want. And then you okay. can get objects from that if you need. Okay. That's going to challenge the way I'd build a random game later, but that's okay. Um, we have a card. We want to get the card where, not where the category is, but where the card dot category. Oops, someone hit caps lock on me when I wasn't looking. And the game is correct. Game is correct because that is on the MT. Difficulty is on oh, order by card dot difficulty. So this is where I love dot walking. We can kind of cheat the Grim Reaper on queries <laughs> and make sure that I didn't screw up and only get five. Okay. That and then the object return you want is I still want to get a card, card object. So you're gonna want the card G the, you want to dot walk the current to the actual card. card. I'm passing the M2M, but everything that I need off of the card I can get through through the M2M. Right. Let me see what's in make card object. Gee, it would have been nice if I'd put it right below, not six stories down. Okay, I pass in this is a many to many. Okay, note to self for future reference. Now passing M2M. Game card M2M. Keep that in mind as we do this. I want the card ID is not the card GR. Right. It's, it's going to be the ID of the card because I want to pull the question and answer off of there. So you want I, card. Why don't you just change the input to be the M2M? M2M, yeah. yeah. It, is, it is the M2M. No, no. I'm no, saying, change the name change of the oh, variable. Because it's not card GR anymore. Because that is. Oh, okay. Change. It's going to get confusing as to who I'm actually referring right. to. M2M GR will do. 
Yeah. And now you can say m2mgr.card dot yep. unique value. Can you do that? Um, Should be able to. Get okay. Because card. Oh, I don't think. You don't know. You don't want to get record. unique it's a value. object. Uh, you just want card because card will be. Well, that's going to store an entire object, though. I don't want to do that. Yeah. You want. You. You. I think it's a glad element it, function it as is. well. But. Is it? I don't know. That Either it is. way, you should definitely use. This is my backup uh, plan. Ups. Well, you could, <laughs> you can use get value on a dot walked card. All right. We're going to have a lot of inspecting in the. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you need sys, okay. sys ID in there. That just feels dirty. Like I'm getting the whole card record just for the sys ID. Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, get value sys ID. I see get what you're value, saying. Sys ID. That's what you're saying. Yeah. And this is this is a non-obvious part of uh, ServiceNow is that I, I'm you may expect one of them is wrong uh, at some point. It, you, I'll go look at the documentation. For this is one of those things where you're kind of violating the principle of least surprise because it feels like when you dot walk that mm -hmm. you are getting a glide record, but in yep. fact you are not getting a glide record unless you explicitly do the get whether it get ref or get ref get ref record. Get ref record, yeah. Because what you, as as you guys just said, it's a glide element of this yep. thing until you make it a record. So that's where it gets a little confusing. So the difficulty comes off of there. The daily double comes off of the M2MGR. Oh. So uh, Naveen says in the chat, what if instead of doing all this stuff, what if you just passed m2m dot oh, card you could pass in the dot walked object Absolutely. because the dot walked object above yes like when you call this as opposed to changing this is yeah. there anything i need off of this table to generate any of that okay. not really no i do need the id of this m2m record because i need to update the state when it's updated there is stuff in the service portal widget that updates the state and answered by so i need that information so you could pass in both, right? And then, I could, I could pass in. but but actually, at this point, you're actually farther. You've done more of it than than not. <laughs> if it doesn't work, I'll unwind it. How's that? I thank you, Naveen, for that. So the state is going to be from the M2M. The question comes from M2MGR dot question, and the image comes from this one. I'm going to pass in M2M. This one I need a get ref record because that's I don't have a card gr at this point. But to, to Naveen's point, that is in fact a solid uh, like when you're doing a refactor, yep. we even even if you don't leave it like that forever, that is a solid uh, transition plan to kind of get things going. Yep, 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 yep. So I'm passing card gr there. I need the image off of that. Cross your fingers and hope to die. The um, feels like I'm missing something. I put more on, oh, because I don't need the answered by yet. Get card image should work because it's still yeah, referencing it's still, a card GR from the attachment have, table. Walked it back to the card GR. So that should yep. be the same, getting the same thing it would have. What do you say we just see if the board displays and call it a success at the bottom of the hour? Uh, Let's do that. I don't know, Will. I, I think I led you astray on the get the value. <laughs> I think you need this ID dot get value. Such confidence. <laughs> so this also brings up uh Joshua was asking uh about the UI action link. That's the problem. I have seen this recently. Yes. Get value on a glide element is not available in a scope. Curse Ugh. shakes fist it's at the sky. It's true. Yes. <sighs> and I think we called it wrong anyway, because the get elements or the elements get value is a non-parameterized call. Ah. All right. Well, it's so not going to work for us the, anyway. So not if you just so if get value, and it's also so not callable from scope, but so humor me. If you did just did a card dot two string. Yeah. What he wrote initially was card no, dot. Had, yeah, I had society dot two string, but this would make more string. sense. That would make more sense for getting the sys ID, but the rest of these bad boys, we're going to have to uh, 
do kind of the oh, same you're saying thing. Every one of those things is not going to work. Yeah. Can you, uh, what if, is it worth getting, doing a get referred, get referred? You got to do it anyway. So do it. Okay. Uh, well, I already did it here. So why not take advantage yeah, of it? Move that up and just use it. Yeah. Use okay. it. Nice. Okay, so now that I've got that, what is actually, that? Mean? Actually, you had you done that initially, script. had you done that initially, you wouldn't have had to. You do wouldn't it. have to change anything. Yeah, undo your script essentially. <laughs> Copy that one line, reload the script, and put it back. <laughs> put it back. Go to the revision record. I'm fast at this. Car. No, say, I, uh, get, at this point, you really and truly, you could just close it untouched. Well, no, no, that's not true because you have. I already uh, saved it and tested it. But there's versioning. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Here, this is going to be quicker. Copy, delete. It's only a few lines, right? Car gr dot get value, paste, done. Get this one is difficulty from there. Car gr, you know what? This would be faster to copy this piece. This is yes. when you start looking for. This is a, the find you want to find and replace. Yeah, the efficiency thing. I don't want to replace all of them, do I? That one's on the M2M. This one's on the M2M. I think, is that it? Uh, question. 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 Is, yeah, question is the attribute of the... Hey, look at that. I can just do that. Was that the end of it? Looks like it. All right. There we go. Save. Repaint. You definitely see our, our different score. Uh, oh, nice score. Now I'm not, if I click one of these, will the card widget pull up the right information? Probably no. not. Cause I didn't. Cause you haven't adjusted that one yet. Yeah. There's another script include function that's being called. And you can that. see right there, we can see angular. Uh, if you go back to your service portal, you can see that angular is now, uh, you've got a thing that should be data. That's not data. And that's when you get that weird, uh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, you see the templating show up yeah. when it when it is because of the error, uh, like Service Portal and Angular. Um, a lot of it, it, like it looks weird when you write it because uh, it can be confusing whether you're looking at a live. Although you're writing these things as if they were textual, and a lot of times, uh, like these values of the HTML fields are in fact live variables. So it, it's one of those things where you're a little confused about what's code and what's text sometimes. Yep. 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 Well, we got the, we got the board, which was. I think that's a, I think that's, that think that's qualifies reasonable. as a success. Yeah. Re we can, we can mess around with service point. portal and the script include next time or, or time after depends on what we got up, lined up next week. But, but uh, I call that a success. Yeah. The strategy, I mean, the strategy is there right now. It's just a matter of like walking it through to the ends of all your, you basically just have to having having correctly carried everything forward now it's just a matter of uh traversing you know all those relationships and making sure that all the code and you know whether you have you may have to rewrite something in your widget and etc cetera, etc cetera. but i'm hoping i don't have to touch the widget that i've re i've leaned on yeah, the scripting leaned on the scripting so it. much that if yeah. you, if you tweak oh. that hopefully it just renders properly the the real trick oh, is going nice. to be is the is the widget passing the right information back to the script include because I'm doing all that through scripted REST APIs through uh -huh. the the you know the scope dot HTTP calls that I, I've abstracted this thing I've layered it enough that I'm just injecting stuff at the right layer to go okay just change where you're looking at this point and get the information from over there and stick it over there so that's that's one of the beauties of architecting the service portal to the script include to the uh -huh. uh, it's almost like the OSI seven layer model in software. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. So uh, one thing, one lingering question uh, Josh Saxton had was, uh, can you share what you did with your service portal? Uh, I'm not sure, Josh, do you mean like literally share the code or are you saying, I'm not sure what he means by sharing with the service portal, but he is talking about, I think the way there's a UI action link that pops it up. Maybe. There are a number of interesting lessons learned. I've talked about these on the community live stream last week over the series of the week, but we can get into that more because we're going to need to dive into service portal on this application at some point to, to address a couple of things that are still undone. I'd be happy to share those. The code itself, the whole app as a subset and the demo data will be made available right after knowledge. So that's the plan nice. is to put on the share portal or GitHub repo if you prefer. Okay, cool. 
Well, all right, gentlemen, that's, uh, that, uh, I think is a good, excellent place to end with a provisional, uh, success. Yeah. I'm, I'm going with provisional win here. Like you haven't tweaked the card and really tested the data model between yep. you know, the transference of information between them, but, but that'll probably be depending on how you built it. Like you said, it should be fairly, fairly quick to do that other script include. And then the, the checking of the, the data transference, uh, I'm sure everyone on this call, Feels pretty close. probably most people watching this have done this thing. Have you ever demoed an app to, let's say not a core developer group and you look at it and you're so excited that the variables are populated and they're looking at it. <laughs> and they think it looks like nothing. I did something as opposed to nothing and you're happy. And they're like, well, it just looks like crap. <laughs> yes and yes the, the fact that the fact that you in fact got that angular error that the board filled out but you got those angular errors is in fact a success it is but demonstrated point. to a certain um audience population that said well why did this part not render <laughs> but you're in fact getting uh, in your process of refactoring you're exactly where you expect to be at this point yeah Actually, probably a little further. I'm surprised everything went as smoothly as it cool. did this time. That, it went it went pretty well. I mean, you're refactoring uh, like we, we it, it was actually pretty smooth. And uh, you could pretty, if this was in production code, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't have too much trouble with what you've done here. Like looking at it as a secondary reviewer, looking at it to promote mm -hmm. it up. Oh, here's I, something we I didn't discuss. Like, this, this is actually pretty clear what you're doing here and reasonable, and this would not take very long to review. We actually deleted the fields, and those will be applied to the data model before the script runs, the fixed script. So that's it's something good. to consider in production. So we blasted our source material before the fixed script got to it, and that would be an issue. So you may want to do this in multiple revisions to say, revision one, I'm going to Put the new data model in place. That's built in in my hesitancy. Thank you. Remember, that's <laughs> that's thank you, Mister Word of Caution. <laughs> that's already built into my hesitancy. Is I wouldn't have deleted it until yeah. I had tested deploying it to at least one other instance. Good point. <laughs> because because of that. And now I have one more table to export. <laughs> all right. <laughs> to save all, right, all my Chuck, demo data. So, uh, how was your beer today? My beer is, since I was talking, is still about 20% full, but it is wonderful. The Black Butte Porter, I give this a solid 4.25. Nice. All right. My, my dangerously close to stupid uh, today, which uh, was just a hilarious name, and I was tickled pink when I picked it up. This was a good beer, and we've had a good day, and it's Friday. It's getting a four. It's getting, that sounds like some of that is context. <laughs> uh, you know, every, yes. every, everything is context, sir. You cannot separate the rating from the context. <laughs> the, the extra quarter point for context. You are correct. For success, you get an extra quarter point. <laughs> you, get a, you get a quarter point. This boot tread uh, amber ale is uh, quite serviceable for, you know, the random thing at the grocery store. I'm going to give it a 375. I like it much better than the thing I'm replacing which will be, uh, I'm not sure. Now you've got that problem, which is when do I drink the other four of the one that I don't like that much? That's, <laughs> That's not like are, an end of the evening. Those <laughs> are presents for someone yeah. else. <laughs> House guests. Those might be presents for the, those might be the presents for the lawn. You have, to, you have I, all of these new neighbors, just go and give them some. That is true. We have discussed the phenomenon of like, at least in the old neighborhood, if somebody, a neighbor invited you for a beer, it's usually like a Miller Lite or, Oof. and I would always smile. I try to smile as much as possible while I drink it, but I'm secretly horrified. <laughs> well, there I you have, go. Next I've time you a party, you, you bring it over and, and throw it in the cooler. Three. Three. And it's cooler. still better than what they had. <laughs> <laughs> keep the empty and you walk into the house going, mmm, this is great. Try the other three. <laughs> that is a problem of the modern age is once you have craft beerified your palate, it's really hard to go back to, uh, you know, what you used to drink 20, 20 years ago. Yellow oh, piece of Vassar. <laughs> Already. <laughs> Okay, with that, we will uh, shut it down and head into our weekend. Thank you, Chuck. Thank You're you, You're welcome. Thank you, thank gentlemen. You everybody Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone watching. Have a great weekend.
We'll see you again next time.